Hey, kitty girls, it's Monday, February 19th, 2024, and welcome to Cubs Out Loud Drag Race Tea Time, episode four, where we are discussing Welcome to the Dollhouse and the Sound of Ruzik episodes of the latest season of RuPaul's Drag Race America, the OG, if you will, series. And uh, thank you for joining us here with the podcast. For those of you that don't know, my name's Gary, and with me is the ever fabulous. Hello, everyone. It's Damon. Welcome. Welcome. How yes. you be? How so, you fam? For those of you that are familiar with us, we usually record on Sundays, and then it comes out like on Monday to the Patreon, and then Tuesday to the regular. But uh, somebody took a little weekend vacay and was away, so we're just a little delayed, but that's all right. What can I? What can I say? <laughs> the bears were calling, and I decided to <laughs> follow up. <laughs> Okay, well, I, I'm not going to make any <laughs> puns or jokes about, you know, pots of honey and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. uh, with that being said, are you ready to dive right in and get started with yes. our first section? All right. Let's Racers, go. start your engines and may the best drag queen win. All right, time to put the pedal to the metal. So, it. For those of you that are not familiar, we basically encapsulate these uh, two episodes and we talk about uh, three particular areas on our overall thoughts from both of the episodes. So we've got serves, which are the positive things that we liked about that stood out to us in particular. We've got swerves, which are the negative things, not so hot, uh, probably should have avoided that road hazard, if you will, in the race. And then nerve. And nerve can be either positive or like, yes, mama, you've got nerve, or negative as in, girl, you got some fucking nerve. Like, mm -hmm. what are you thinking? Um, so that being said, uh, let's get into serves. Damon, um, I'm intrigued seeing your notes now. What What is your serve? Ah, my serve is actually for a new challenge, okay. a new main challenge, the doll, making okay. the doll. So yes. this... The, Welcome to the Dollhouse episode was all about um, making a um, doll of yourself, putting on an outfit. Your outfits had to, they should have matched or at least coordinated, if nothing else. I'm good to know. Um, and then from there, um, so it was a design challenge, a brand challenge, uh, I think. What did Rue say? One second, because I think I wrote it down. Story challenge yeah storytelling design brand and storytelling mm -hmm. yeah and i think that's just a very unique i don't think we've had that combination of things in encapsulated in one challenge before i mean I, I know we've had some balls where sometimes it's sort of a like there's a story element to it but mm -hmm. this one in particular i think was a really great challenge and i think it was a really fun way to challenge the girls to do something a little different um, it also made them focus because the thing you have to realize is when you think about dog clothes, it is itty bitty. So you really have to yes. adjust how you make things like, um, Safira, for example, mm -hmm. um, she had that, um, it looked like a pattern. Maybe it was like a, um, um, threaded sewn like pattern in the, um, um, outfit in the in the fabric she got mm -hmm. and she used the same fabric for the doll well on a doll the things look massive right so the irony is with Safira's. i think a lot of people really liked the outfit on the doll mm. but not so much on Safira because it looked so different on the doll yeah yeah. The flowers were huge, and it was, like, bold, and yeah. the semi-sheer, like, aspect, like, kind of gave this interesting peekaboo effect to the legs, mm -hmm. and her dress looked nothing like that. Um, yeah. Her dress was very, her dress gave very off the rack, which sounds really terrible, but that's kind of what it was, in a way. I could have mm -hmm. found that in, like, I mean, I'm not saying, like, maybe, like, a Talbot or a higher-end, like design store maybe. well and i remember somebody saying it kind of gave them mother of the bride mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and not that, that that was meant to be a dig but it was like mm. it's okay it's there which is intriguing because i know she wanted to do an opera coat which girl better be careful about that um yeah because <laughs> you don't need to be known for that like on every outfit or whatever but 
she didn't get to complete that or have that ready and had she done that and had the coat on the doll i think the judges would have liked it more mm. but i don't think it would have put her in the top yeah yeah I know she saved herself with that one, and I know she's kind of regretting it. But <laughs> to to quote to quote mother, what the fuck are you doing? Here? <laughs> that was honestly shocking. That she, as as the edit goes, the voices got in her head got to her, and she decided to use her immunity potion. Yeah. And it was pointed out, I think on Race Chaser, that even Rue said something like, Are you sure? Or yeah. like Yeah. Like, are you Rue certain? Asked. Or something like 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 because I think even production was kind of caught off guard by her decision to drink the immunity potion. And it's funny because I think the comment was like, if mother asks you as a double check, you should change your goddamn mind and be like, you know what? No, no, never mind. Yeah, it smells sweet. It's very enticing, but I'm gonna hold myself off. Like you could have played it up in some fashion to not do it. Yeah, but instead she did, and then I love she how immediately like, regretted it. Right, and then played like, how did it taste? She goes bitter. <laughs> like, <she's, laughs> you know, like she was like, it was not very pleasant, and it's because she owned it. She was like, the moment I did it, I was like, ah, shit. Yeah, but I yeah. don't know if it's gonna bite her. I don't think so. I don't think so. We'll yeah. We'll see. Um There's one challenge mm -hmm. where having that immunity potion would have been could have been would be key. And that's it's actually what's coming next up next week. week which yeah, is yeah, next, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Cuz you know we've seen many a queen that thinks she knows everything and knows her shit and gets on there and then suddenly Rue's not laughing and they're kind of fucked. Right. So No, and that's fair. Like that next week might be a pivotal week. It it could that it could be part of the edit too. For those that don't know, the next week that's coming up is the snatch game. Mm-hmm. So that could be the pivotal week where they try to play off like, oh, Safira already used her immunity and look at how she's doing. Oh, yeah. Jane hasn't used hers and look how she's doing. Like they might kind of play it like as a focus yeah. of, of the episode is like one has it, one doesn't. And will, you know, will plain Jane use it if she doesn't do well? Exactly. Um, you know, or will she be willing to save Safira mm. if Safira doesn't do well? Because remember, she doesn't have to keep it. She doesn't have to yeah. use it on herself. She can give it to somebody else. And if she's so full of herself, then give it away, mama. Like, don't don't bother. Don't hoard it. Don't keep it for yourself. Let, let some other contestant have it who needs it. <laughs> Just saying. That right there. <laughs> You know. I get what you're saying. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what about you, Chris? Um, I said my serve is the cast reading the cast. Oh. In 16 seasons, I don't think it's been since. Was it season? Was Alyssa season five? Yes. I don't think it's been since Alyssa. Roxy, Detox, Coco, right? Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. don't think it's been since that season we've seen drag queens really being drag queens. Mm. And the reason why I say that is I feel like the workroom this season of all seasons, especially of late, of the latter half, we'll say, of the regular U.S. season, truly is like starting to feel like the behind the scenes of an actual show. Mm. That the personalities that are being shown, while there are cameras there, they are kikiing and having no problem reading each other. And like like how, you know, Plain Jane says, are we going to start, you know, talking about score and keeping track or keeping record? And Don's like, no. 
and and Plane's like, oh no, oh oh, we're not. And she's like, no. And then the joke is, well, because Dawn hasn't gotten a point yet, so because right. Dawn hasn't had a win, she doesn't want to start keeping track. And right. <laughs> so like, I mean, that whole back and forth of that banter, and I was like, Ooh, I was like, how interesting. So I I like it because I find it entertaining. Like I find right. it amusing that they have no problem cutting up with each other and yeah. saying shit about each other. Yeah. And it's very this... interesting because, I mean, even Plain Jane got called out and was like, okay, so who's your new target now that Amanda's gone? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and she's mm-hmm. like, well, I'm going to turn a new leaf. And everybody was like, well, uh-huh, sure, <laughs> girl. Well, we, 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 well, anyway. But uh, the, I agree. I think this has been a very, this has been a very catty cast mm-hmm. in a ways. And not in the just being sister, like, cattiness. I mean, while that's there, yes, don't get me wrong. But, like, there's been another level to it that, like you said, harkens back to older seasons where the queens didn't have to worry about how they were um, perceived on social media and had all the fans being rabid and assholes about, you know, tacking and such. Are they biting tongues a bit i think probably but this is the first time in a while it's like it's refreshing it's a bit of fresh air well that they're actually being okay with like caddy because and it feels that way across the board right so here's here's the difference for me they i feel like there's a lot more equity and participation in this type of like shade like reading kind of like It's not like Silky or Mistress. Right. Where Silky, like, clapped back a lot, I felt, and Mistress was being bitchy. Like, Uh and I don't think that either of them were, like, you know, doing bad things in their personality, per se. But I feel like they were, like, the, the really leading the pack or out in front of so many people and so all this the focus in the spotlight was on them where with this Mm -hmm. particular group i really feel like i can't believe i'm about to say this i really do feel that they have committed to being a cast of sisters in this competition and that they have no problem speaking up and saying things so when Mm playing jane comes across the room in the doll challenge and it's like sister uh-huh. and immediately geneva's talking shit plasma's talking shit like everybody's like oh here she goes like i mean and they're just saying stuff out loud in the workroom and then uh-huh. like nymphia is carrying on and they're like girl nobody cares like boo boo to fool like we, we're on to you we're like we're ignoring your ass like throw your little like emotional tam like temper tantrum on the floor and act like you know like you don't know what the fuck you're doing <laughs> we're on to you like and that's the stuff that i like is that they're just like we're not having it like that's not like you know and and i think that's good to see that that's coming because we're reaching the halfway point of the season like after these two episodes five queens have gone so Uh there's two more and then we truly are at the halfway point so i feel like if you're going to divide the cast into thirds we've got the first third out of the way which is the really getting to know them and see their personalities and what they bring to stuff and now we're in the like the the middle of the race so to speak and like this is the part where we're like predicting like the next three or four out because girl if you're not getting any wins like you're probably not going to be here much longer mm. um Ooh. and i whoop. well you know <laughs> and and i mean that's that's my personal opinion i can be proven wrong and then you know you finally get to the last third and these are the ones that are going to be going into the you know last couple episodes mm-hmm. so um, yeah, I just like I just like the fact that the cast is you know reading each other, and I don't really feel like anyone's being super mean. Like Jane is is a whole issue. Yeah, Jane is a whole. Speaking issue. of Jane, <laughs> sorry. Well, let's let's talk about swerves, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> so, Plane's game is what I wrote down on our doc here. Yeah, and it's in reference to um, some reality checks. Um, you mentioned one in particular. Um, I had marked down 
from um, Untucked last episode, episode six. Yeah, episode six, which was um, um, Geneva saying, um, I believe it was Gen- Geneva, um, crash and burn plane. Mm. Yeah, I felt that in my spirit and I loved it. I like, yes. <laughs> like, there's a part of me that. And I know we're kind of, I've, I've talked about playing a lot and I kind of feel that way. And I hate this in a sense, cause I'm kind of doing what she wants. You know, she's trying to be the villain and the, you know, of the season and get that talk and get all of that shit. And guess what? I'm talking about her. So congratulations. You got what you want playing. Um, but it's just very interesting to me, the way that this is being played out and looking at some of the things that she has done it's not been that great. Can I? Be, let's be honest with each other. And this is going to be really cunty, but um, playing Jane's drag is mediocre at best. I have yet to be like super wowed, like oh my god, that's so fucking amazing! I can't believe you did that uh, about her drag. And this episode, these past few episodes were a perfect example of that to me. Um, her doll outfit, it was aquatic themed, but this was a branding challenge. So I had no reason to know why you were doing what you were doing other than the fact that you had this light blue, like fabric. Um, there were elements that were unnecessary that you couldn't even see, Like she had starfish on the back, on her back. Why? I guess because the ad with the aquatic theme, but you couldn't see them because of her hair. Um, mm-hmm. Then there was this flower challenge um, runway, um, and the outfit was meh. So, yeah, um, I have two thoughts. I'll go back <laughs> to my first thought, which is a sidebar. I, I think the dollhouse, like, main challenge where the flaw came about is all of a sudden they were talking about this is the such and such edition Uh wait wait, which is it are you supposed to be branding yourself and representing yourself or are you supposed to be branding and representing a version of yourself that Mm. was the issue i had with that challenge across the board consistently was because like geneva got the feedback from rue like you should have done something with car like, your name is Geneva Carr. Why uh-huh. didn't you do something with a car? Like, you know, and I found that interesting. Like, that was the feedback. And I'm like, oh, but these other bitches get to do, like, the aquatic edition and the such and such edition. And, like, yeah. and that's okay. Like, right. inconsistency. So, like, I, I call shenanigans. But my second thought is to go back to plane. I agree with you. The thing that is working for plane is that all of her looks have been concise. Mm-hmm. I, I don't mean that necessarily as a compliment. I just mean there's not a lot about them that are problematic. Right. This last one is the closest we've seen to her ever really kind of like not do well. And by that, yeah. I mean the moment she came out, I was like, what the fuck is she wearing? <laughs> like, I was like, wow, okay. And then we've got this ridiculous prop of this really long hair with this like rag doll at the end and i was like yeah Ooh. this says yeah. to me you were hoping this wasn't really a challenge <laughs> like that like you know you kind of like took something you had and you modified it or you know you threw something together so yeah like i agree with you that they're they're like they're okay yeah. but the thing is like up to this point in the race you just need to be okay like even i think uh maya made a comment in one of these episodes about like they're okay with being safe or being in the middle or whatever because mm-hmm. that means the focus isn't on you and another one of these bitches goes home basically right and i think that's what plane's game is when it comes to the actual like the show of drag race yeah. to make it as far as possible the thing that will be a challenge will be can you start rising above going beyond uh-huh. like wowing 
showing yeah. improvement. Yeah, I need to see improvement from Jane. Yeah. I need right. to see more from her than I'm seeing so far. I'm not convinced yet. Yeah. However, I will add, she does make good TV, and that's why I think she will go far. Mm. Yeah. Because she makes good TV. Yeah. Not due to, you know, talent, ability, um, you know, sisterhood, what have you. Right. But just the fact that she makes good TV. Yeah, that's fair. And that's a read, sis. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Gary, I am. What? Oh, OK. Wait, what? All right. So listen. I got three <laughs> swerves, and I actually have a fourth, and I'm going to start with the last one that isn't even written here. These two okay. episodes, mm-hmm. meh. Like, <laughs> I had to go back and start watching Welcome to the Dollhouse to even remember what the hell the episode was. Like, what happened in the episode? Like, it was very forgetful for me. Like, it just didn't really make that much of an impact. So, while it is a new challenge, I was like, eh, okay. Yeah. Nothing, nothing super exciting. So, anyway, so to me, that's a bit of a swerve. Like, I would, I would want the episodes to be memorable, and that's kind of not happening. Um, okay, so the most recent one of the of the three swerves is the mix and match Rue. Oh, mama, oh. mama. Are you talking about this most recent episode? The yes. She had on mama, Girl. mama. <laughs> mama, this is garbage. <laughs> what in the hell was she wearing? I don't like, even know. Seriously? Like I don't did know. something happen that like like there like as someone said on a I think it was on a podcast or something, they were like, No, it wasn't even. I think it was on Twitter. Someone was like, I think I shared it in the telegram. Um, at least I think I did. Someone was like, It looks like Mama Rue decided to participate in a runway challenge. <laughs> like and this is what she came up with. And then they were like, you know, it was just, I mean, it was bad. It was so bad. I was like, did Zaldi get COVID and like something weird <laughs> happened? Because like it was so mix and match. Do you know what it reminded me of? Do you remember? I don't know if, if you wanted to do these. When I was a kid, there was this fashion plate type mm-hmm, game mm-hmm. thing. And so like you had all these like plastic inner piece of plates. Yes. And so, like, you could mix and match them to make a model of, like, an outfit, and then you, like, took your charcoal or your pencil or whatever and, like, went over it, and it, like, made the full design, and then you could color Mm -hmm, it in. mm -hmm. That's exactly what this reminded me of. I was, like, I could clearly cut that bitch into three pieces Mm -hmm. on the horizontal and be, like, whoop, 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 like, just swipe left, swipe right. Like, I could totally – I was, like, what in the hell happened? I'm going to show this to everybody, but I I found your post in the chat, and I'm looking at this picture. Yes. Like looking at this again, where, 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 why, how, who, whoever did this, there's, there's, there, there needs to be questions. It's almost like stomp two times if you, if you're in danger. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like what is going it, it, on? It's, it's like you said. It's just three like random things, and. And nothing, nothing goes together. Yeah. Let me, let me rephrase this. I'm looking at this outfit again for the, like, cause it, it, I saw it literally yesterday and I'm still like, what the fuck? Um, there's a textured floral something kind of bustier or bra kind of top that's pink, like, Looks like pink roses or pink flowers kind of thing going. Maybe she was going for the flower theme. I don't know. Her torso Mm -hmm. has a black and white striped, maybe, no, it's not chevron. No, no, Um, no. It looks like it's the the drag race flag, the black and white checkered flag. But it looks like it's been, somehow the pattern's been on a bias, slightly angled, and then it's like folded yeah like weirdly like a cummerbund or something yeah and then there's this blue skirt blue like pastel like not pastel looks like maybe periwinkle mm-hmm. periwinkle um skirt that has like a bow on the side mm-hmm. and these long black opera 
clothes. Vinyl. I'm just like, oh, vinyl. Whoops, I'm wrong. They are shiny uh, as shit. Like, they are shiny. And again, it, nothing goes together. Yeah. Not a damn thing. Yeah, this just killed me on, on Twitter when I saw this. It says she wanted to participate in a design challenge, and someone replied and said, and she and she should be eliminated. I was like, <laughs> oh, girl, girl. That's the shade. It's the truth, though. She looks horrible. Yes. She looks horrible. It's been a long time since I've been like, what the fuck? So that was my first swerve. Um, my second swerve is pine cones. Mama, what was this? What was this foolishness? The sound of Ruzik. I get it. It's a. It's the musical show, and we're taking a popular IP thing. Whatever, we're redoing it. Apparently, in the show or in the movie, it's probably just in the movie. There's some weird throwaway line about the one boy liking one of the girls or something, mm-hmm. and there's a comment about sitting on a pine cone. This is what the internet had told me, and I didn't confirm it. And I was like, because I was like, what is up with Nymphia in this goddamn pine cone and her wanting to shove it near her coochie? I'm like, this is so <laughs> twisted and makes zero sense. Agreed. I mean, I, I mean granted, the, the story of the Rusical in, in and of itself kind of doesn't make sense, but. I was like, that was just so weird. So I was like, that was that was completely unnecessary and unwanted. Yeah. Um, anyways. And then the last but not least is the upside down bouquet. <laughs> Tsunami. You are lucky you didn't have to pack your bags and go home on this girl. Oh shit. It was ugly. It was ugly AF, and it did not make any comprehensive sense. If I had turned off the sound, didn't hear the story, the voiceover, and watched her walk. Because I kept looking at it as she's talking about it. I was like, what the fuck is she wearing? And as I'm listening to her, she's talking about how she's an upside down floral bouquet. And that's why she has all the cellophane around her and blah, 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 this and that. And I was like, like, girl, there's no flowers. It's not going to miss, girl. I want to say this in in the nicest way. There needed to be something on her legs. Like a, a floral printed tight. Something to kind of give the idea of what she's going on or add volume to the bottom of the dress. Yeah. That even even gives evokes like the floral kind of motif. If you'd just done a bunch of like like big, like flowery kind of things underneath there, mm-hmm. I would have gotten it a lot more. Got what you were going for. But you were relying on this non floral ish print as far as we could tell. I didn't see it really because yeah. um, maybe it didn't read on the runway. Um, as the like, it was the trim on the train of the dress, um, or the hem of the dress, I should say. And I get maybe that was what you were saying with the flowers, but it wasn't. It really wasn't. Yeah, no, it was. It was bad. And and again. If you like, there, there, you need to add elements to make this convincing. Right. Like, there needs to be stuff on your head. There needs to be something going on to make this sort of realistic. Did I like it? It was cute. But it, 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 her story was a little off. And that didn't help things that it, these two did not match. The whole outfit was off for me. I was like, <laughs> Girl, burn it. Start over again. Something <laughs> different. It was bad. I just, I, I, sometimes you just gotta go with like, and you kind of, I understand wanting to think outside the box, but well, sometimes you don't. When, when the, when the prompt is as, as obvious as flowers. Well, but we don't know quite what the prompt was fair, fair, i mean fair. like i was just watching an interesting series of videos this weekend while i was washing dishes where brooklyn heights and uh denali are on this it's not a very good youtube channel i'm just gonna say <laughs> um i don't care for the production quality of these episodes but part of the thing that, that they get asked about now that it's been a couple years since their season is like how much did you spend on your outfits 
Mm. And I, that was the part that drew me in is like watching these episodes of these Canadian queens talking about like, you know, how much they spent on their outfits and like who made the outfit and blah, 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 and how they came up with the concept and stuff like that, amongst other things. But what I found interesting is that Denali talked about how there was a couple of times that like you get something and it's like down to the wire and you have to leave and you have to go to drag race and the thing arrives and it is not what you were planning. Mm. And you're just like, well, guess we'll see how this goes or whatever. And and this is this is the only thing I'm going to give Tsunami a possible pass on is that this outfit showed up and she was like, okay, like because I because because that happens to the queens, you know, like you yeah. have to plan like 20 outfits and you only need like 13 or 14 or 15, you know. So you're kind of taking a gamble and like that's what I, I said earlier about Plain Jane. Like I think you put an outfit, you know, in in the bunch thinking I won't really necessarily hopefully have to do this one. Um, mm. You know, and then you find out, oh, shit, I do have to do it. So, yeah, there's that. Yep. So those were my three swerves. I was like, I mean, there were others as well. I just decided to stop at three. Cause had so I had so many. A, I had a lot yeah. of issues with these two episodes. <laughs> Apparently, dear. Well, you know. <laughs> so with that being said, let's move on to Nerve. Who are you give a Nerve for or what for, I guess? Um... Mother Sephira, okay. or Mother Sephiria, as she called herself in the musical episode. Um, I just, I just love her. No. <laughs> I like to keep it simple, but like her performance in the musical was amazing. Mm-hmm. Like I loved it. Like despite the musical in itself, which was kind of somewhere over here, like trying to be something that it's not. I don't know. I don't know why we, anyway. Girl, it was so high school. (laughs) Yeah, it felt very weird. Anyway, that being said, um, I'll talk about the musical later. Um, But uh, her her performance in that, um, I know you're going to talk about the runway, but like her runway, um, it just, it is like giving me all that I want to see. Although I wish she would, I know she didn't bring another, breastplate but like jesus girl like we need to we you should have gotten a bigger breastplate i'm sorry i actually think she has two do you i do because the itty bitty titty one (laughs) from the very beginning i don't think has really been seen much until the musical Mm. and i think she thought she could get away with it in the musical because she wasn't really using cleavage or whatever you know like it was coming up so it was like not that big of a deal and to be fair there are large, broad-shouldered women out there who have very small chests. So Fair. there is some, please forgive the term, realness to the realness. <laughs> what she's bringing. It's just probably not uh-uh. common and, yeah. and not expected in drag because notably the judges from time to time have said, like, you need to proportionize, like, you need to have, you know, an hourglass figure like you need to have bigger breasts and bigger hips and blah 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 and like bigger hair which is intriguing because it's like well when we nitpick we say things like that but then when we think you're fabulous and you don't have those things well we don't say that mm-hmm. anyways so no i hear you yeah um yeah i just i i think it's been it's been great and i'm, I'm really i was really i really enjoyed her performance in the musical specifically and um i know she got in her head regarding the um doll challenge Mm -hmm. i feel i think she would have been safe i don't think she was in the she would have been in the bottom especially considering some of the ones that were in the bottom yeah i think it was abundantly clear that she didn't need to take the immunity potion like if if i had been her um who's in the bottom? Okay, looking at who was in the bottom. Um I like I'll put it like this. I don't think she did bad as bad as the three people that were in the bottom for that challenge. Right. And I think that was something that got said on either a podcast or something I watched or whatever, where they were like, Girl, did you look around the room? Like, did you pay attention and be like like, did I do worse than so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so? Like, you know, like, did you bother to pay attention? Because 
you kind of you kind of really should have realized mm -hmm. that you weren't going to be in the bottom. And even if you ended up in the bottom, you probably would have kicked their asses in the lip sync. So yeah, there yeah. You go. I mean, she had like I would have been blunt, I, and I'm going to be blunt here. I would have seen Geneva's outfit, seen that she had one used the same fabric that two other girls had just used. Mm -hmm. Two, her outfit was last minute and kind of janky. And three, um, she's been in the bottom like twice already and been like, she's going to be in the bottom and she's probably going home. Right. I'm good. Right. <laughs> right. Like if you were paying attention to the room and to the show, you would have been right. like, well, she ain't going to make it. Yeah. She ain't going to be safe. Mm -mm. So, yeah. No, that's fair. That's fair. Oh, Geneva, you're a cute boy. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I, like we could talk. <laughs> you're kind of cute. He kind of cute. I'm just saying. Um, but um, yeah, you 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 were you were going home. I I knew it when you got in the bottom. Mm -hmm. That's fair. That's my thing. But anyway, what about you, Mister Gary? Um, I said Q ain't playing. And by that mm. I mean, Q is having none of the shenanigans. <sighs> Q is there, and is treating the race very seriously. Yes, not quite to a detriment, but is like is is really coming across as like eyes on the prize. Yeah, and because in the girl groups, in the Rue groups, whatever you want to call it, um, she didn't do well. She knew that she didn't do well. Mm hmm. And like it was gonna, you know, and ended up lip syncing and stuff. Um and so she she lip sync, right? Um, yes. Yes. Sorry. I'm like, was that a fever dream? Uh anyways, she was like, Nope, not doing that again. That was not enjoyable. Like, don't don't wanna do that. And I was like, Okay, there's 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 the fire under your ass, like storyline that needs to be there for a person that's gonna be making it to the top like four or five, like you know, that it, it's kind of a trope, but it's understandable. But the doll challenge, girl, she pulled some Elizabeth Taylor shit out of that, like, mm -hmm. stuff. And I was like, that is how you do this challenge. Yes. And then, and then, <laughs> this bitch decides to... I will say, like her portrayal in the mu in the musical was okay. Mm -hmm. um, I thought the the never ending stole was a dumbass like visual gag, and I hated it. But that's not too. on her. Um, but then, flowers on the runway, and she pulls some Jim Hansen like. Uh, dark crystal like fairy fantasy shit with stilts this whole thing <laughs> and comes out and the moment she came out i was like jiminy christmas give her the fucking win like <laughs> i was like god damn she slays on the runway like she gives no fucks to the rest of you bitches in the show like do not mess with her her only achilles heel so far is like body movement choreography type stuff. Yeah. Now we haven't gotten to singing just yet. Um, that'll that's coming later, I'm sure. So I'm not sure how, how her pipes are. And and we'll see how this um, snatch thing goes. Yeah. That's a good one too. Yeah, for, that's true. For, that's true. Um, but yeah, like I mean, I'm just like she ain't she ain't playing with y'all. No. She's trying to win, and it's very obvious, and I like I, seeing that. I agree. I think. Don't get me wrong. There's a. There's a. It can. It's a. There's a definite level of professional. Like I'm doing this is my life. Which is, he's kind of um, stated as such that this is her life. Right. Um. So. Her being on the show is probably very important to her. And doing well and succeeding is very important to her. Mm -hmm. So she's giving her all. And I and I agree. Eyes on the Prize is definitely the name of her game. Right. She's not being shady. Um, she can be. She can have a little, you know, PP 
with the girls. We've talked about that, but her, um, her focus is, her her eyes are laser beam focused on that end end game. Right. Yeah, it, it's it's abundantly apparent she wants to make top five, top four. Yeah. And I think she might. I'll be I'll be curious to see how she does because like I agree with you, like snatch game could be questionable and like the singing thing could pose a challenge. Right. I mean I'm gonna I'm gonna give props to the queen that's not here anymore. Magami girl calling out the choreo in untucked. Good on you, honey. Good on you. She was like choreo? I'll get to that. <laughs> I was like it was so funny. It made me think of that being, get her, Jade. Like, I mean, it was just this moment where I was like, she's not wrong. She's not wrong at all. Because all you did was fucking saunter. Saunter, saunter. <laughs> like, anyways. <laughs> you ready to move on to our next section? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so it's time for snaps and eye rolls. Uh, these are the hits and the misses. What we, we kind of refer to as the highs and the lows of these particular episodes. So uh, we give snaps for things that we really want to give some shout out recognition to, and then eye rolls for oh baby. So what are you giving snaps to, Dana? Um, I'm giving snaps for Law Road keeping it real. Okay, so I I, I got to ask you a question up front. I'm sorry. Yes. You know who this bitch is? Yes. Kind okay. Of. Let me rephrase. I don't. <laughs> so um, when they were like, and they're like, and special guest judge, La Roach. And I was like, who? <laughs> Never heard of her. <laughs> don't know her. She's very intriguing. See. Yeah. But. Oh, it says retire stylist. That's nice. Thanks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm looking. <laughs> Y'all, I'm looking at Wikipedia and I'm just like. Oh, I didn't see that retired. Well, fuck. Um, um, so I'm just going to really quickly read the little bit on um, uh, Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. um, Law Roach is an American retired fashion stylist best known for his work with artists such as Zend 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 Zendaya, Celine Dion, and Anya Taylor-Joy. Um, additionally, he is recognized for his time spent serving as a primary judge on Max's um, competition series legendary so he was one of the judges on the legendary show oh okay yeah so he's you know that's kind of where i you know knew of him okay um and again like and i've seen he's been like memed and video like clipped and reeled all over the place so i i i, I find him to be you know, this very realist, real person mm -hmm. getting, giving no fucks, as it were, and stating their opinions. And I liked that on the judging panel. Now, there have been calls out, like, I've seen, you know, Twitter posts and such about him, like, having him be a permanent judge. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, maybe. I um, think he should be, like, a T.S. Madison. Right. A like, good rotating game. Right, right, right. I was impressed, and I appreciated that a lot of the queens responded to knowing who La Roche is and wanting to be read. Right. And admitting that they might not survive. Right. Like, <laughs> and I was like, exactly. Wow. I was yeah. like, that's very interesting that they're willing to hear the harsh criticism, knowing it may eviscerate them. <laughs> yeah, I think because it's coming from this legend as it were mm. um I'm trying to think um yeah i mean I, I i appreciated what they had to say i have a funny feeling there's a lot left on the cutting room floor from the edit that either they withheld some of their like comments mm that could have been more, I guess, cutthroat or whatever. Um, 
and, or and or if they didn't hold it back, then those didn't necessarily make it. I don't know. Mm. And that may have been a little bit intentional. That may have been like there there are people out there named Gary who don't know who this person is, and so we don't want to like come guns a blazing, especially if they become a recurring every season guest kind of a thing. Um, you know, because because what's a little sad is that like there's some expectations now about Michelle Carson and and Matthew. Um, the, uh, Ross Matthews. Ross Matthews. Sorry, I knew as soon as I said it, I was like, "What Matthew Ross? Is that his name?" Um, <laughs> um, that like they're they're very predictable. The things that they're going to say, and now there's like all these spoofs about you know how Ross is gonna you know give these stupid platitudes or whatever. And like you're not really gonna get anything tangible out of that. So I find I find that interesting. So yeah, I I saw that there were like some some comments made it people were like i think this bitch should be like a permanent judge and i was like oh mm -hmm. yeah so yeah yeah there's a there was a panel i think it was one of the ones i saw was like having um la roach um t.s madison um nicole oh gosh Oh, what's I forget. her name just left my, Nicole Byers. Woo, her name just left my hair for a oh, second. Oh, I was gonna say Nicole Page Brooks. Anyway. <laughs> no, um, Nicole Byers and um, uh, Lonnie Love. It's kind of like a like a a, a panel of judges, mm. maybe for RuPaul Drag Race. I think they're making like let that be like the permanent. I'm like, mm, I don't think that'll ever fly because you definitely need RuPaul and you probably gonna they're probably never gonna let Michelle Visage leave unless something causes her to want to leave mm. but yeah I could see I understand the respect of having that but I think more queens would have been fun right so interesting yeah Sorry, I got it. I got a message, and I have my Facebook up, so I heard, and I had to respond. Anyway, that being said, okay, Gary, how about you? Um, Ooh. I'm gonna give snaps for flowering mother Safira. Of all the drag race runway, like outfits presented in all the seasons, this one has to be making top ten. Mm. At a minimum. Mm. Because I think the first thought after wow was, how the fuck did she pack that shit? <laughs> like, I've been thinking about that a lot recently with some of these outfits. I'm like, what in the origami motherfucking shit is going on in the packing to get some of these things there? Because that did not come in no two rolling suitcases. That came in a tote or in a box. It was shipped FedEx or some shit because it was yeah. it was so beautiful and so well done. I yes. mean, like my thought was, girl, you got your coin. You got your coin out of that one. Like, because that was that's something else. Yeah. So. Absolutely. I just think it was I just sorry. I just think it was top to bottom exquisite like the hair looking like the like mm -hmm. the part of the flower i was gonna say pistol i think i might be wrong it's yeah. been a minute um to like it her turning around and it being like a full blooming fucking flower mm -hmm. like jesus Christ. oh it was so amazing i mean the, the thing for me is like nymphia has kind of been consistently bringing like almost all stars level to the main runway like regular show and Safira's this last week was like at that height like that was that was one of those things where I was like oh shit like and so my thought on was like girl I don't know how much you paid for that but you got you got all your money out of it because you, you definitely so did. wowed the hell out of everyone mm -hmm. 
Um, so well, it was so well designed, and it worked so well for the runway. It just, it, yeah, yeah. Um, I saw a random reel today on um, um, Nymphia making her outfit, mm-hmm. and it looks like she made it herself. All right, since you brought her up, let's talk about this. Oh, shit. Okay, here we go. I wasn't a fan. <laughs> I didn't care for it. She turned the corner and came out, and I was like, what in the quilted duvet bullshit is this? <laughs> like, and I get that it created a, a certain amount of shape and volume, and it was kind of intriguing, but I was like, yeah. I was like, luckily, you have that hand leaf stunt that you, like, you got to do to, like, show something different about what you were wearing because this like chocolate chip mint green colored like quilted like shape thing i was like no no like i i don't Mm -hmm. like it send it back like do i have a 30 day return on this i just didn't like it i was like and i was kind of surprised at like how how that reaction came out of me because i've liked a lot of what Nymphia presents and the judges like what Nymphia presents. But I was like, why is it one solid color? Why aren't there other colors? Why isn't it embroidered? Why, why isn't it painted? Like, I don't understand. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. was so lost. It was like, it was unfinished to me. I was just like, and then a part of me was like, well, someone could say it's fashion and I maybe don't get fashion. So, I'm trying to get. I wish I could find it, but I don't think I'm going to be able to find it quickly. Um, was I? Was it here? One second. Don't mind me. Just really quickly trying to see if I can find this. I'm not going to be able to. Anyway, there's just, a, the video kind of gives it. The video specifically gives the reference where this look came from. It looks like it's from something 60s, 70s. It was a black and white image, so. It might be an older fashion reference that she was going for, mm-hmm. um, but I I can't um, I'm not going to be able to find the video because it was on Facebook and Facebook reels are shit because they never stay the same and you can never find them again, um, right. or you just keep getting it like 50 times from different people. Right. Um, anyway. Yeah. No. I I just. It was a miss for me um, since you brought her up. But yeah, I mean, and and, and to me, it was like, <laughs> Safira cleaned your clock, girl. Like, I mean, <laughs> Safira was like, don't don't get me wrong. I just I liked it. Nymphia's outlook. I thought it was a very unique take on the flower thing. Um, but no, like if we were judging this. um, That episode on runway alone Mm -hmm. Safira won like hands down like yeah unanimous decision no hope no no ifs ands or buts about it she right slayed and I would even say this I think plasma comes in second over top of Nymphia Mm. because when plasma came out around the corner immediately I knew exactly what she was giving us yeah I was like that is Dolly Levi I'm like that is you know, classically Hello Dolly. That is that, like, obviously she's a vintage queen. She loves that kind yeah. of aesthetic. But I was like, and I know that some people were kind of talking about My Fair Lady. And I was like, have you watched Dolly, or not Dolly, holy shit. Have you not watched Barbara and Hello Dolly? Like, like that is so right out of that mm-hmm. film. And yet it's a different take on it. It has ombre. It has all these flowers. And I was like, good on you, Plasma, because it's a really good showing. Like, I mean, it was mm-hmm. it was sort of predictable in that, like, if you know her and you know what she likes, and it's like, oh, of course she's wearing that. Like, yeah. but it was well done, you know? So Yeah, I, I think people went with flowers and My Fair Lady because Eliza Doolittle was a flower seller, like flower lady. Oh. Yeah, just, just so everyone... So random musical trivia. That just goes to show because I haven't seen it, so I don't know. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, no. um, So I I definitely think uh, Safira deserves all the the snaps and the props for that uh, 
for the Saphir flower. deserves all the flowers. So true. So true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, okay. let's move on to eye rolls. Ooh. <laughs> I'm sort of not surprised <laughs> by this. Damon, what are you giving eye rolls for? Um, the unbalanced rusical. So we've kind of hint hidden on this a bit this episode, so I'm not gonna waste too much time on it, but comparing the three performances. So essentially it was three girl groups coming together and and Mariah um, played by Plasma was sort of the thread that threaded it all together, as it were. This the physical was weird to begin with. Like I said, um, I feel like this was a weird take for the sound of Ruzik. Um, just being honest, it felt off. Like, why are we doing random? like girl group drag and she's performing and she's a singer and she wants to be a part of a drag family, I guess is what they're going. For. I don't know. Whatever. It, 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 it just felt weird. It just felt off. Anyway, that being said, the groups are all, the groups are weird. Mm-hmm. So you have the mother superior and the bad habits, which were kind of, very just I, 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 it's hard for me to describe their like dance style they're kind of maybe supreme girl in a sense but it wasn't really going there um then you had the von snaps which were um this sort of oopa loopy um polka dancey kind of thing going on and it was complicated looking at the stuff that they had to do mm-hmm. was very complicated and along with that, along with the um, uh, bad habits, I have to look down because I keep forgetting they were called. Um, and then you had the Baronesses that literally walked. Mm-hmm. Literally walked. There was nothing choreographed about theirs. I don't recall even seeing them do they did some never wrong i realize now but it wasn't a lot because we we got to see q kind of floundering with the basic stuff and there's a part of me that wonders if they changed it Mm. and that's why i'm considering calling this unbalanced it felt very weird to me that we see stuff in rehearsal that i don't think we see during the musical Sometimes. Yeah, but that, that's a classic misdirect. I mean, how many times have we seen and they're like, oh, we've got to do choreo and no one can keep up and they're like not doing great. And it's like mm-hmm. the one person who like knows how to choreograph or is like a traveling show like dancer gets it. And everybody else is like, oh, shit, like blah, 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 or whatever. Like, and, and I agree, like time and time again, there's probably a video out there someone has already made of all the comparisons of like, Here's the rehearsal, and then here's the actual performance, and please note, this never showed up in this. Right. Right. I agree. And that's something that's, again, that's kind of bothering me. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to add another caveat to it. Unlike other musicals, well, no, let me rephrase. There's one star. In this up in this one, mm-hmm. there's Mariah played by Plasma. Right. Other ones have had like a good balance in regards to roles. Mariah in this one had to do so much mm-hmm. that it felt like obviously anyone that wants to like succeed is going to try to go for that role. If they want to make a an impact, but I'm serious. I'm laughing because I'm like, not my fat ass. I would have been like, I would have looked at the script and been like, nope. One of you bitches can fucking do that. And if you knock it yes. out, good on you. And if you don't, bye, girl. Like, I mean, like, like to me, it was a well, make or break. Like, it was yes. either you did it or you fucking failed at it. Yeah. 
I agree. And so and I was like, sort of, not my ass. I would I would have taken one of the lazy ass <laughs> like, things and been like, I'm he not would have been anything. one of the baronesses, so you just had to walk around with a stole. Who the hell would want to be a shady cunt and just like, rah, 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 like say things <laughs> and walk back and forth? That's the best part of that whole rusical. In terms of like what you have to put in and the labor you have to put in, I mean, my God, it was totally made for Plain Jane and Tsunami. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just so yeah, saying. it just. It again, like overall, it just felt it just felt unbalanced, and and I feel I don't want to say bad. I feel like if you were someone like Megami, who wasn't really getting the choreo to begin with, mm-hmm. did really well. Like we saw that in the girl group challenge, she wasn't doing really well, very well, but she looks like she went home. Mm-hmm. You know, I went back to the hotel and worked and worked and practiced and practiced and did what she could and, and succeeded. She didn't look nearly as bad. No, she didn't look bad at all to me um, during the choreo. There were a few moments here and there that were a little off. But going back on my memory of it, it looked like she was kept keeping up with everyone else. It, but again, it was a lot of stuff. So, As opposed uh, to Maya and Morphine. I think so. No, I meant I meant like oh. to me, Maya and Morphine were the worst. In mm. terms of like choreography and keeping up and like being in sync. Jiminy oh, Christmas. That part. Yeah. That was bad. Yeah. Yeah. It was Agre- just bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That part. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, I wasn't I didn't I didn't give that any much you know, mental capa- mental on that because I knew it wasn't it was eh. Mm. It was very eh. Yeah. Anyway, Gary. Um, I'm giving eye rolls for Mean Girls. Oh. This whole like aspect of the show. It's so ironic to start out talking about how they're like being sisterly and like this and that. Um, but there's also like this weird undertone. A little mm. bit that I feel like there's like they're tr- I, I almost feel like they're trying hard to not like recreate the Heathers. That mm. there's a couple of them that are like. Like Tsunami and Plain Jane. Um, I'm not saying they are the mean girls, but it's just one of these things where I'm like, like I'm seeing these kind of bonds. And so they're kind of like being a certain way. And I feel like. It's far too easy to pick on some mm. of the other queens. Right. And I'm like, oh, is this what's filling the vacuum, the void of plain Jane picking on a mandatory meeting? Like, is that what's going on? I I, I don't know. Like. And and like, you know, this whole thing about Q and Tsunami, because Q was like chastised because she said two names and that pissed right. off Tsunami and she was like because Tsunami was giving this energy of like keep my name out your mouth bitch like <laughs> you know and I was Tsunami. like I mean you know and she and Q's like well I don't know why you're getting so upset about it or why you're you know getting you know mad and, and Tsunami's like I'm allowed to feel how I want to feel and I was like mm, okay like you know I mean it was just this like so I feel like there's these like kind of odd things that are happening a little bit about some of the personality that's being presented yeah. and yeah. and so i'm like what what's going on here like <laughs> like are we are we intentionally trying to be mean are we intentionally like trying to like you know uh, well anyways i don't know we know plain is intent i i like i'm just gonna say it i think plain is intentionally being mean for the sake of being this season's like villain. Um, I think there is intent behind what she says and does. Mm -hmm. Um, And we can, she can blame it on like her upbringing or what have you, but we are, we are all better than who we came from, where we came from. So let's not get that twisted. Right. Um, we can do better. You can do better, dear. 
Um, I just think you are intentionally being disrespectful and mean mm. for the sake of television. That's fair. And it's working. But again. Well, and that's where I find it interesting how, like, you know, even Plasma made a comment about, like, oh, I guess being like Jane does work. Like, she made that comment about how, like, she stuck to her guns and was just not giving in that she wasn't giving up a part of Mariah. And that was the end of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I found that kind of interesting. And then there's, like, this commentary, I guess, that's going on about how Safira just keeps giving in. And I'm mm. like, mm, I think Safira is, like, baby, if you're, that, if you're that passionate about it, have at it. Like, right. like been there, done that. Like, I don't need to prove. Right. I, I will prove I... in my own way. I think, in my mind, I think Safira ha- has done a great job of, it doesn't matter what I do, what I'm going to get, I'm still going to be amazing. Mm. You go on and do what, you know, you could take this role that you absolutely have to have and want, whatever, you go ahead and take it. Take it. Let's see how it goes out in the end. Like, let's let's... Let's see you roll the dice and do it. Like I'm not. See what I don't think she's caving in. I think she right. is being like, "What's the point of this fight?" Well, and that's where I found it interesting because, of course, in confessional, they're totally going to in the edit include her comment about like, "You want it, you can have it." We saw what happened the last time. Like this bitch right. fought for her, fought for the role. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Oh, <laughs> now it didn't work out the same." No. Um, in this case, but you know. Yeah, no, I just, I, so I just kind of feel like I'm eye rolling like this, this, because I, I don't know if it's the edit or what's going on. I feel like there's this Mean Girls esque thing. Yeah. And I'm like, eh, whatever. Which is kind of funny for. considering the run I just came from. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So with that, um, that's kind of the show. Yeah. If you have ideas about our thoughts and want to give us your feedback, you can do it several ways. You can go to our blog, that's CubsOutloud.com, and actually leave a comment on a posting there. You can also send us an email at CubsOutloud at gmail.com. You can leave us a voicemail message. You can call us at 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. You can go uh, through social media outlets and type in uh, Cubs Out Loud as one word to find us. Um, if you want to join our Entourage uh, Telegram chat, you can go to tinyurl.com slash telegram hyphen C-O-L-D-R, uh, where I've gotten into this interesting habit now where I'm just posting all sorts of random shit about Rue Girls. Um, <laughs> I realize that's what happened this past week. I like put all these posts out there. And I was just like, look at this, look at this. Um, <laughs> look at her. Yeah. If you uh, want to see when we're doing our actual live shows of the main uh, Cubs Out Loud series you can go to tinyurl.com slash calendar uh hyphen col if you want to support us there's several ways to do that and first of all you can go get merch you like merch you know you love merch you can go to zazzle.com slash cubs out loud and you can find all sorts of interesting things there um you can't get a damon but you can get what damon's wearing so (laughs) so he's wearing uh our drag pride uh shirt in our consent series it says consent is my foreplay and it has the crown and the colors for drag pride on it Um, we also have all sorts of other items including um i don't have anything on at the moment because uh i was being lazy tonight um but you can get a you can get a coffee uh mug you can get a soup mug you can get uh, i think a shower curtain we get all sorts of kind of shit um stuff on there um, or if you want to, uh, you can become a patron. You can go to patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud, and for a dollar a month or more, you can be a patron, and you get uh, the extra special extended versions, the extended cuts um, of these episodes. They're not really cut. There's no edits. Um, it's just <laughs> – it's as raw as it is, baby. Um <laughs> So if you like that, uh, you can get that over there. And also the podcast is its own audio feed um, if you're interested in that as well. And then, of course, we're also on uh, YouTube. If, however, you just want to throw the dolls a dollar, you can go to paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud and give us a one-time donation. And we would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. (laughs) <laughs> like I said, um, pretty much anywhere that you uh, listen to your podcast, you can get us as an audio feed um, for uh, just type in Cubs Out Loud Drag Race. 
Damon, if folks want to get in touch with you, how would they do so? If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cup 79 on most favorite related sites or on Facebook. You can find me as Pup underscore Umber on Twitter. That Twitter is not safe for work. You can find me as Pup Umber 79 on Blue Sky. That is not safe for work. If you want safe for work stuff, you can find me as DMA Gamer 79 on Twitter and TikTok. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. I do have my own Twitter account uh, that's separated out. That's GareBear73DRAG because that's where I like to keep all of the drag stuff sequestered. Even though you horny motherfuckers on Twitter keep posting about shit when episodes happen. It's becoming <laughs> annoying. <laughs> Anyways. Like, um, I really wish I had your, your separation. I got spoiled on um, who went home while I was at um, NAB. Well... See? Kind of spoiled. Let me rephrase. Yeah. I, I I saw an image and put two and two together and got who got eliminated. I appreciate that YouTube did away with like the preview. Like like it used to be for quite a long time that like when you like were hovering on a video or whatever, mm. like it would play like advanced yeah. like, like frames. And mm-hmm. so always the what you packing would like invariably show you the queen and you're like, really? Like, I haven't even seen the damn show yet. Anyways. Um, so that way, they don't seem to do that anymore. So, like, I appreciate that out of them. But, yeah. Uh, so we'll be back in a couple of weeks when we're going to discuss the next couple of episodes of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 16. And at that point, uh, we will be at the halfway through the season mark. So I'll be interested to see where we stand then. Mm-hmm. But uh, until then, we'll talk to you all later. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.